morning. It is actually afternoon. Afternoon. I guess it's morning somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. So, yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to work soon. I don't want to go to work soon. Do you want to go to work later? Technically, soon is later, so. Mm. I mean, okay, never mind. We won't have a discussion about words and their meanings. But anyway, <laughs> well, I don't have to because it's Saturday and I work Monday through Friday. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm better than you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, I just have a more desirable schedule, that's all. Yeah, no kidding. Well, maybe. I mean, I guess it depends because you... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I was, like, I was thinking there was like a day you wanted off for some reason. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, you my, do your DM mine's, stuff. Yeah. yeah, mine's malleable because I can be like, I can't work these days. And then my schedule just has to fit that. Yeah. So yeah. that's nice. But I also feel like I would be someone who would like those like uh, work four days for 10 hours. Yeah. And then have like a three day weekend. I... I kind of feel like maybe I would like that too. I go back and forth on that because I also am like, by the time I hit 5 p.m., I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so done, you know? Yeah, but then at that point, I'm like, I'd rather just do another two hours each day than work another full eight hours on Friday or Monday or whatever day I would be working in addition. Yeah. Yeah. They are. They have piloted programs uh, in different countries where it's a four-day work week, but... I think some of them are four 10 hours, but they, others are just four, eight hour shifts. So it's like, you're basically working a 32 hour week and they're saying it's like basically just as productive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. At a certain point, your production just falls off. Well, the interesting thing is that American productivity has skyrocketed over the decades. And if you see the charts where the productivity is put on the same chart as American uh, worker wages, Um, the wages have not kept up with the productivity. So we've become more and more productive and, um, I wonder if productivity is starting to go down now because of all the act your wage. I'm going to, uh, bet. Yeah. To a certain extent. Um, and the unfortunate thing is that some people will just be like, well, workers are lazy, you know, and it's a, um, it's a weird work culture thing now where it's like, you know, the undying patriotism for your job where it's like <laughs> patriotism you, for your job. It's what it feels like. It feels like you, you really need to, and I, I've especially experienced this in, um, working like, uh, frontline and stuff where it's like, you are supposed to go above and beyond. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's like, but you're not a paying me above and beyond. You're paying me minimum wage. Yeah, and there's often like few incentives for that, and it's supposedly supposed to be just an intrinsic incentive to do the, your best, right? And I definitely get that to a certain extent because I've always been that way. Um, I think my generation, we were brought up by a lot of baby boomers, and baby boomers ha- definitely had that idea of like you're married to the company and you go above and beyond it. So that's what we were taught to do, right? Like we yeah. were, we were taught to produce and and now yeah. it's being exploited. Um, well, absolutely, it, it was starting to be exploited with the baby boomers. Um, they just kind of went along with it, and then parts of my generation went along with it, and parts of my generation were like, "Hey, wait!" And then millennials were like, "Hmm." Uh, we're we're gonna kind of buck against this, and then Gen Z was like, "Screw this!" <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, so it, I feel like um, it's interesting how different generations will be credited with like the slow rebellion. Doing well, they'll be they'll be credited with doing a certain thing. Yeah, it's always but, very but it's specific, been, but it's been unraveling throughout the generations, really right? Yeah, and so it's like unravel, like unravel, 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 and then this generation pulls the final thread, and they're like credited. With, you know. I feel like there's always so many things like that yeah. where it's it's like oh this this generation's like doing this this and this and it's like if you like look in the past right 
Yeah. Everyone's been doing oh, this. Oh, it's like for the, the headlines um, when you were a kid were like, millennials killed this, millennials killed that. And I'm like, that was dying. I, it's just, they it finally died, you know? Some of my favorite <laughs> ones are memes have always existed and seeing stuff. Like one of my favorite ones is there was this, like, I think that what it was, is you know how they had those ships in a jar Oh, yeah, yeah. Things. Yeah. Well, this was a taxidermy in a jar. And it was... Oh, my gosh. It was two frogs that were fencing... Wow. ...inside of this this bottle. Wow. And someone was just like, I'm glad that humans haven't only been fucking weird recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, we have... We do have this strange sense of, like, we don't know our history. Um and I, I think every generation does it. And then, we, you know, we tend to realize it more and more as we get older. Like, right. Yeah. Like, so we, we, we go, oh, well, this is, this is just terrible. And then you talk to somebody who's older and they're like, no, that was, that was bad back then too. It's just, you didn't notice is that it, it, you didn't notice it as much because now you have the internet where everybody yeah. can put everything and you I can mean, see the awfulness. Things that stay common problems don't you don't always remember it as being common in the past. Right. And so it's like, and, and there's also some, I think there's some weird level of gaslighting too that older generations do where it's like, well, this is all your generation's fault. And it's oh my like, gosh, and it's like, yes. wait a minute. If yeah. you like actually look, we weren't yeah. the first ones doing this. Right. Right. Yeah. It was people will talk about, um, uh, all kinds of, of uh, prejudice and hatred. And I'm like, may I present Hitler? <laughs> may I present thousands of years of war and hatred? And you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. all kinds of, you can go, go back and see all kinds of, uh, um, bad blood between different, you know, uh, tribes or, uh, countries or, you know what I mean? Like there's always, uh, races, you know, whatever. There's yeah. always, there's always stuff like that. It's just, it feels, I think it feels different to us in America now because it's easier to transmit those thoughts because of the internet. And so we just see them more and, you know, now I don't want to get too far down a rabbit hole, but I do think there, there is a way that that, has been weaponized recently that is presenting an actual danger to democracy. So that's, I think that is, I I actually do think that is happening and it's, it's scary. And, um, but that's, Oh, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Let's just pretend that's not happening. Although actually the topic you want for today is I think contributing to the crumbling democracy. A little bit. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Cause I mean, so yeah, internet the the internet and the internet <laughs> the web the world wide web the interwebs <laughs> um so i mean for one thing yeah it's definitely something where i think it's actually great you know there you realize way more things about the world now because of the internet and so i i think there's good parts of that and then of course you have the usual people who are manipulative and everything and so i think the internet has made it easier and harder for that yeah yeah because you can fact check way easier but so many people just choose not to and Mm. just like accept what they read on the internet as true and i think what's hard is that people and th- this is a hard one because usually you have trusted sources. Mm-hmm. Well, trusted sources also aren't always right. Even if their intent is good, oh, sure, they yeah. might just not always be right. And so usually when I'm subscribed to something, whether that's literally or just I follow it on the internet, I usually have two or three of those things that I am like watching for it at, or looking at the same time. Because, I mean, I want... To make sure I have the correct information. Or um, sometimes it's also just interesting. And so it's good to hear different people's perspectives. But uh, I have noticed recently that like, you know, obviously a lot of people know that there's an algorithm on the internet. Like depending on what you consume yeah, um, or even what you talk about outside of the internet will 
basically gear what's happening on your internet Mm -hmm. um so that way it it captures you more Mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just because of uh the way like you guys have taught me or maybe it's just the way that I am or anything like that, but I don't really get caught up in stuff a lot of time on the internet. Mm. Uh, And I think some of that maybe just comes from my ADHD. I don't know. Like I might just genuinely not be able to give a shit enough. mm, (laughs) So like, I think my, my focus just sways too easily Mm -hmm. on stuff that is not interesting to me. Uh, but you know, I, I've noticed that with my like friends and stuff that, uh, my, my one friend, it'll always be critiques. It'll always be, um, people viewing. So not necessarily critiques, but people viewing stuff negatively. Like they always see all of the, the negative things about something. And so they always, Mm. It, so unless it's like a really good thing where a lot of the positive outweighs the negative, then a lot of time they view stuff as negative because that's what they're always seeing online because that's mm. what they always click on. Mm. Mm. And I think for me, I like to hear people's interesting thoughts about something. And so there is some negative stuff, but a lot of time I also hear positives because I like I like that stuff that kind of gives you pause and be like, oh, you know, it's actually not as bad as I as I thought it was or like praising people for doing something amazing with little or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so I always feel like I get a much lighter and lighter side of the Internet, I guess. Hmm. Um, then I don't know if that's what like I get more than a lot of people do. But yeah, it's always interesting to me when. I need to set up a new uh, Google um, workspace because like, so I will, uh, most of the organizations I work, I I work for um, will use Google workspace for their office stuff. Right. Which means I set up, um, I use the, the Google Chrome. um, Oh, what do they call them? Profiles. Like, so I don't have to worry about logging into like my personal email and my work email on the same. I I just have the whole separate profile. Right. And so, um, if I need to look at something on YouTube on my work one, well, I'm not signed in as my personal, you know what I mean? And so I just see a blank homepage that is completely different than mine. Right. Like, because mine has been algorithmed, to <laughs> to what you know and I, it really just throws random crap at you well when it doesn't yeah have your when it doesn't have your information it just i'm assuming it goes with what's most popular yeah it probably tr- does and it's trending. very fascinating to me every time because i'm like oh wow i'm just really not interested in what's most popular i'm like like this does not interest me like it's usually like prank things and like um i mean there's always at least one mr beast thing in there because you know why, why wouldn't there be um and, but it's always, it's always very like, I don't know how to explain it more like popular culture. Um, it, it, not anything very like it's all surfacey stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's very interesting because in that way, algorithms can be very good because then you can find more of what you like. Right. You know, like there are certain people I've, uh, or channels I subscribe to on YouTube that, um, you know, either provide really interesting information or they, um, provide an, you know, a type of entertainment I like, you know, like I like college humor. Um, I, I, I really like, um, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Um, uh, there are certain uh, musicians, you know, I like, so when they come out with a new video or something that'll pop up on me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I like that stuff. And I like, and I like a lot of, um, organizing, um, that, you know, how I like to organize things. Organizing videos can be very satisfying. They are very, very satisfying. <laughs> Cause it's just like, it's almost like an ASMR kind of a thing. Like, you know, like, even if it doesn't have the sounds for it, it's almost like an ASMR for the eyes. Like, you know, you see all this chaos and it becomes ordered and it's just lovely. Um, so like, and it just feeds me more of that. That's great. But then like, 
where it becomes, where it can become dangerous is when it just feeds you more of the same ideology and then yeah, just kind of pulls you down a more extreme version. So, and I noticed this happening one time because I needed to do research on something. I don't remember what it was, but it was like, it was like kind of like a, like a far right, um, conspiracy theory kind of, it may have been the, the red pill stuff. Um, which I really hate. They, they used the like red pill, blue pill thing of the matrix to be like, I don't remember which color it was in the movie that you took to wake up to reality. Um, I don't remember. It must be the red pill actually. <laughs> Cause I think they say like you take the red pill and then you, I think being red pilled means you've woken up, I think is what their whole thing is. Um, weird. And, and, and their, their wake up is that, you know, men are superior and, um, you know, so ironically waking up is not woke. (laughs) Yes, this is correct. (laughs) So, but it's a very like angry masculine, um, not masculine. I think masculine is, is a neutral term. Um, macho toxic, toxic masculinity, you know, like, like it's that kind of thing. And so I was doing some research on that and then the suggested videos started to come up and it was, first of all, first, at first it was like Jordan Peterson and then maybe like some Ben Shapiro and things like that. And then it just like, like, so I was like, okay, I'm going to, cause they were talking about the same subjects. So I was like, okay, I'm going to click on some of these, see what they say. And then it was just like, I could see the, like it getting more and more extreme as I clicked through different videos and I was just like, dang, this is how kids like teenage boys in particular end up falling into these like extreme ways of thinking because maybe the first thing they watch is, um, you know, they're curious and maybe the first video isn't, isn't that bad or maybe it's even like, middle of the road, you know, yeah. maybe, uh, mod- maybe it's a, maybe it's a moderate politician talking about like asking some questions that are legitimate questions, um, that, you know, these far right people will have a terrible answer to, you know, and then they go down this path and then they end up being like conspiracy theorists and, you know, believing QAnon and, you know, going around being jerks being jerks yeah uh yeah i think do you know those like spotify algorithm memes where it's like my it's like my spotify trying to figure out find an algorithm for me oh because they like like all these different kinds of music or whatever yeah i feel like that's just how my general algorithm is for everything because i mean i think you guys know it's like anytime i have a question i just look it up yeah yeah like uh and a lot of people don't think of that first of all but then it, uh, it, I probably just confuses my, cause I'm always just asking like the most random shit ever online. And so then my algorithm's like, all right, I don't know what to do with this new information. <laughs> 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 Does it ever feed you like random videos? That's like, what does this mean or whatever? Um, I mean, I do like a lot of science videos and a lot of like, I was going to say therapy videos, but it's more psychology videos i guess that's probably what it does and and so it's probably just using that and yeah. it's pushing it over to the science yeah. and psychology question yeah. area yeah um but no i think sometimes it just it just continues to feed me the things that it knows i'll watch because it just gets confused with the stuff that i'm adding to it and so well, then and yeah. so then it's just like all right we're just gonna throw the next episode of your video game series you've been watching at at you because right. you're clearly not Yeah, because the algorithm's job is to keep you on YouTube. Yeah. Like, that's, you know what I mean? That's the job. It's not, it's not to, um, I mean, in a way, it's to make you happy because that will keep you on YouTube. But, uh, I mean, I, I think sometimes we forget that that's the purpose of these algorithms. It's all based on, um, sales, revenue, clicks. I just get, you know what I mean? I just get bored. Because I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just watching people do stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't like watching people do stuff. Mm. So, yeah. He says, 
I come down so many times and watch you watch a video of someone else playing a video game. Yeah. That's watching somebody do stuff. Yes. But I still get bored of it pretty okay. quickly. <laughs> it's not like something I'd sit around and do all day. Mm, I gotcha. um, and I feel like a lot of time you see me doing something on my computer while I'm watching. Oh, that's true. You are doing something. That's the thing I, I can never understand is like how you handle so many channels in your brain at the same time. Like I can't. If I'm not doing it, then I can't focus on the thing that I'm. Like I, I I'm do doing. not get that. I remember when you were in middle school. I'd be like, Malcolm, why are you doing all this stuff? You should be doing your math homework. You're like, I am doing my math homework. And I'm like, you're watching TV and doing my math homework. And I'm like, mm, I don't understand how that's possible. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yep. I can do, I do need a certain level of, I'm uh, not always, I sometimes need a certain level of like distraction, quote unquote, like stimulation. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the brown noise, I find the brown noise to be very helpful in helping me focus. But a lot of times if it's just like completely quiet, I'm like, okay, I need something like, you know, and oftentimes it, even just the sounds, like if I have my window open, just the sounds of, um, you know, cause we're so close to the park, like kids playing around the playground or whatever. Yeah, it kind of makes its own. Yeah. It's like, like everything and then dogs barking and people walking up and down the sidewalk, like it makes enough of like a kind of background, you know. I think I don't like chaotic backgrounds. I can't do chaotic. But that's what's chaotic to me. See, I don't. I, think, I don't know. I, think it's I don't know. Different for every person. Because like I don't know what's going on. Like I don't. I don't know why the dog's barking. I don't know why. I think if it was like June, like our old dog, in the living room barking constantly, that would be that would be distracting to me. Like yeah, it's either it's either way for me. Yeah, I I really think that is a per person thing because I oh, know people sure. who are like, you know, they'll put on death metal and then they'll be able to like write a paper. And I'm like, that That's would prevent me from writing a paper. Like I cannot, there's certain types of music that I just can't listen to because it, I feel like it scrambles my brain. Like if it's yeah. too like heavy and loud, there may be sometimes I'll go for that, like in a very specific circumstance, but. So for me, if it's like, if it's new stuff I haven't experienced before, then I usually can actually do it without other stuff. Mm. I actually prefer it sometimes because I don't want to be distracted from the new thing I haven't experienced yet. Mm. But I, I like to rewatch shows all the time. Like I, oh, yeah. I rewatch Star Wars or rewatch the MCU or like one off movies or shows all the time. Yeah. And so those are very easy to put on and then do something else. And so my main focus is the thing that I'm actually doing. And then secondary, I'm like rewatching stuff. Yeah, I can't. Um, if something has words to it, I can't have it playing and be doing stuff because then I want to sing along. And even if it's like classical music, but I'm very familiar with it, I can't. You want to hum along? Yeah, I'll, I'll be like, da, 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 yeah, it's, anytime that comes on, I have to stop what I'm doing and like watch whatever scene it is because yeah. it's uh, such a brain capture yeah. for me. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's there are other times though where I feel like I need my brain to be occupied by something. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't figured out the whole ADHD thing. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I think another thing that's hard is um, resisting clickbait. I. I hate clickbait because there there are some things where it's like this is actually what i would want to watch hmm. but are you the channel that's actually going to give this information to me yeah there's also that and um i have stopped clicking on things where it's like she struggled with this and then she did this and everything changed because it's never dramatic like that you know what I mean? And also um, the political things especially will be like, you know, so-and-so destroys the opposite side's argument. And it's like <laughs> destroys is used liberally there. You know, like it's not, but it's made that way to get you to click. But I hate that yeah. because it's always a lie. Like yep. it's not, it's not destroyed. It's, it's you, you pushed back. Okay, good. 
there was one recently with uh Tatiana um Maslani? Yeah. Uh where it was her and Oh my gosh, who was it? I don't know. I was impressed that I guessed Maslani. Uh, she Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't say that. No. Um <laughs> But it, it was her and some other MCU person that apparently got in, like, an argument or something like that. Nope. Nowhere. It was just, like, a thing that a couple channels just, oh, like, yeah, put up. Yeah. And it never actually happened. And so I never clicked on the videos because I was like, this is too many caps. Like, there's too many capital letters here. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I looked it up, and all I could find were, were like, three or four YouTube videos from, like, th three or four YouTube channels that were all, like, similar titles about this. And I'm like, okay, this is so fake because... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also clickbait pictures that'll be like, where are these... Uh child actors now and it'll show a certain child actor but then the article will not include that child actor yep. and i'll be like but that's the actor i wanted to know about <laughs> exactly that's why they, yeah yeah that's so why i just it. i just don't click on that stuff because also it usually goes to some page that has a million ads on it so it takes forever to load what i it, you know it's so like, what i <laughs> usually do with with clickbait is i see it and then i just I look it up separately. That's what I do. Especially if it, if it's like you click on it and you're like, oh, it's one of those pages that has all these ads on it. I'm just going to look up the story myself. Because they'll also, it's always terrible writing and I just want to like, mm. um, and they'll mm. be like, so what's going to happen with this? Wait till you read. This person thought they were going to get, but they had another thing coming. Like it's always so, just terrible writing. And then they like expand the story so long. What's nice about opera is mm -hmm. uh the browsing uh site <laughs> by the way the segue <laughs> what's nice about the opera the opera uh no what's nice about opera is that you can actually put in specific sites that will be looked up first when mm -hmm. you look stuff up mm. so for all my like video game stuff or like my movie stuff that i like it always comes up with certain articles first oh okay and, so okay which is super nice because yeah. some, sometimes a random one-off article from this like crazy stupid news quote-unquote um website gets put on top yeah and it's just not well and all of that comes back to gaming the algorithm right like google is always changing its algorithm and then people are always trying to change the way they word things to yeah. game the algorithm to get the most clicks and that just makes it a game rather than anything about information or keywords you know. is a marketing technique yeah like it's 100 percent. the titles you use the yeah it's um oh gosh yeah key keywords key phrases it's the other thing that i don't think people realize I actually, I think people are, I think it's become more well known now, but there was a time when people would view algorithms as somehow like not biased in any way. They were like, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people did the same thing with science for a long time. And I, I want to start off by declaring that I believe in science and science is a good thing, <laughs> but declaration made. Yes. However, you can design scientific uh, studies, experiments, whatever, to be biased. Like yep. you, you can have bias in a study, and you can can have bias in an algorithm. And like vaccines cause autism, right? He literally found autistic kids. I don't us. remember that guy's deal, but I know it was false. So yeah, he, yeah. he basically made his own control study so that way. It would look 100% like basically he just controlled the data because he didn't actually have the right set of data to start. Mm. He just basically made the end data the start data. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I remember he falsified his results, but I didn't remember what he did. But yeah, it's, and so like, I mean, now, unfortunately, we've gotten to a point where 
because people didn't like science, they've convinced people not to trust science at all, like certain yeah. people, you know, and that is just... That's how it's starting to be more and more, like, period. Yeah, it's it's very... It's 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 very fascinating. But, but real, real quick with the algorithms um, is... Uh, you the algorithms have to be programmed by somebody so yeah. bias can be introduced yeah. and and i just i i the the unfortunate thing is like i said for the longest time people wouldn't recognize they'd be like well but this scientific study says xyz and i'm like okay well you still need to vet the study like because there are also things where things also things are published in scientific journals like that shouldn't have been and if you are presenting an argument in a scientific manner you want more than one study oh yeah you definitely I so mean, if you are telling me that there's only one study for it right yeah that's the whole thing about science they they look at the other they look at a study they go oh we're going to try to replicate this and then they do it again and like the you know. worst is when is when someone's like i researched it mm -hmm. and so i know that this is true and I'm like, I have also done the research. And right. I, I like very clearly have not seen the same stuff that you have. Right. Yeah. It's so And so I'm like, how do I even argue with do you? Do your research. Um, I have. And <laughs> yeah. It's... Except I got in an argument with uh, one of my coworkers in my previous job about catching up with sleep. Mm. And I was like, I... I know because I think she was just saying that like she did the research and it's impossible. Like there's no such thing as catching up on sleep. And I was like, but there like literally is. Yeah. I'm like, I've done it. Yeah. I'm like, I <laughs> like, I don't even have to like, although I have done studies, I don't even have to look it up because I've done it before. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. If that was impossible, then if you had one bad night of sleep, then you would be tired for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I think I think what what it was is that like every day just resets, uh, oh. and so you're just like, and I'm like there's a certain level of level to that. Like yeah, if, sure. If you don't sleep one night, it's not that suddenly you have to get 16 hours of sleep the next night. Right. It's that you're probably gonna get nine hours instead of eight hours. Right. Like your body, it doesn't. It's not an exact eight hour to eight hour. Yeah. But there's like, yeah. And so I think that's what her argument was, and I was trying to be like, I understand what you're talking about, but right. it's just not true. But yeah, one like I I feel like game stuff has been really getting complicated recently because uh I don't know, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, but there's like game when game journalism was new, a lot of it was like real and it was you know people actually talking about games that they liked and it was good game journalism and now it's just oversaturated like everything else is mm. and so now i i have oversaturated with just a lot just like there's a lot of it or is it oversaturated and there's there's a lot of it and some of it is correct some of it is incorrect some of it is like making an entire article over the smallest stupidest detail yeah. ever yeah and um like, I feel like especially recently people have been getting super into like Easter eggs and stuff like that. And so mm. there's all of these articles that are like this small Easter egg or small detail that you missed or like, oh my gosh, this crazy Easter egg that someone just now found in a video game, which is rarely true. Usually people find it day one because people are crazy and know how to find this crap fast. What about that? Like, you, are you just annoyed about it or... Uh... I mean, yeah, I, I get annoyed, but I just don't, I like, I just don't understand why. I, well, I think that, I, I think part of it is the like beauty of the democratization of the internet is that anybody can put stuff up there. Like everybody has an opportunity. Then the problem that creates is that there's a lot of noise you have to muck through to find the thing that works for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and it's hard because, like, you know, you don't want to tell the algorithm to take out stuff that is untruthful because then untruthful becomes biased. Well, and then you're also trusting the algorithm to decide what's truthful. 
Yeah, and we definitely know not to trust ChatGPT with that. So, well, I don't think there's anything automated you can trust with that. You know well, what yeah. I mean? I mean, there's, no. there's, you can't even trust people with. <laughs> like, there's a, I know there's a joke online that, you know, Jack Septiguy is dead. He's just a famous YouTuber, oh, and okay. it's just this joke that keeps coming up over and over again online. Because uh, there was one really popular post where it's like, oh my gosh, Jack Septiguy. Jack Septicai is dead. And uh, Jack Septicai commented on it. It's like, oh my gosh, really? And, and then there was another one that blew up again where it was like, Jack Septicai is dead. And then he was like, again? <laughs> <laughs> there was like a long time ago, uh, bef- I think it was before the, the internet, there was an author, I think, that was like reported to be uh, uh, dead. Dead, yeah. Um, I think, what is it? Uh, oh, it's a popular misquote of Mark Twain. Uh, it says, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, but, like, ChatGPT has gotten it wrong before, thinking that Jack Septicai is dead just because of all the posts. Yeah, because it's, it's trawling for text and yeah yeah so if enough people say something that's the other thing if enough people say something on the internet and chat gpt is crunching that data it's probably going to be like oh this is this is what's true you know now i will say chat gpt is still great for news but you don't trust what chat gpt says like you always have to fact check it yeah like i because like i um my other podcast is based off of video game news. And so I set up a chat GPT that literally gives me a weekly recap of everything that's happened in in video games. That's nice. And then I just look it up. Ooh, that's a great idea. Um, so yeah, it it does all, I told it what websites to check. Mm -hmm. I told it, um, like what games specifically or what genres, Mm -hmm. what stuff it doesn't need to pay attention to. And then like, that's the thing that's great about chat GPT is you can really make your own algorithm. Yeah. And, uh, and then all you have to do is fact check it, which is way easier to do than doing all of the research and then fact checking. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so it's especially, I would say chat GPT is an amazing resource, especially for people in the arts because, algorithm really can screw up so many art things for you i think it's a it can be a great resource for all types of things i don't think ai should be creating art i think that is a bummer well yes and no i don't think it should be creating art for monetization i love using chat gpt to create create art for my D and D campaigns. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of nice that then like if you're just going to personally use something and you're not going to, like you said, not use it for monetization. Like, I think that's really nice and helpful and you can just have something to be like, Oh, this is what my character looks like to your friends. Like, that's fine. Yeah. I, I hate that they're like, you can, you can tell when somebody has used AI to create an image, um, for their like social media and like, cause there's like, why does that person have an extra hand? Like, it's like, you know, I I don't think it's always, I actually don't think it's always a problem. I I think, I think it's when big companies do it when they like lay off a bunch of people. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Cause you're like, you can afford to hire a real person. And and the stuff that you'll get is going to be better and people are going to like you better because it's going to be real art and it's not going to be crappy stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's but what I, I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about artists getting replaced by AI, which I think will be disappointing I, overall I mean, and will be degrading to the art. But here's the thing is that, I mean, everything is is AI already. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is that before ChatGPT, AI was still 50% of our lives because oh, yeah. um, algorithms themselves right. are AI. Right. Anytime you search something on Google, you're right. using what's basically a ChatGPT, except right. for instead of giving you a typed response it gives you an article response right grammarly is ai grammarly is ai um any uh, yeah any autocorrect program whether that yeah uh whether that's text or something else is going to be ai i mean basically any program ever is some level of ai yeah and so what what you need to do is you just need to figure out 
how the AI works. And I think that's where ChatGPT is a, is a great resource because if you figure out how to talk to ChatGPT to get exactly what you want, you can figure out how to use an algorithm on YouTube, on Google and Facebook, et cetera, to get exactly what you want. Yeah, that's true. And so what, what I think a lot of people need to, I, I think the general consensus of this, this whole podcast to kind of start wrapping it up is that, you know, like you, you can't really blame the internet for what you're receiving. You have to, you have to cultivate it. Mm. And, uh, hmm. That's something a lot of people don't realize is that you have complete control over it. I mean, obviously not like complete, complete control over it, but you need to mm. like if there's stuff that, you know, you shouldn't be watching, then just don't watch it. And and I realize it's harder being right. done than what is said, yeah, yeah. but try to actually focus on stuff that you actually think you'll find interesting, because the more and more that you watch it, the more and more it'll be recommended to you. And if there are certain things that you realize are are toxic, then right. then you need to start backing up on that right. and everything like that. Yeah, because the algorithm will give you more of what you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, by the way, I, I did want you said about Easter eggs or not. Yeah, Easter eggs. Yeah. I did want to say I did see something the other day that I was like, I didn't notice this. And this is super cool with, um, oh, my gosh, I've forgotten the actor's name. Oh, no. Uh, he played Ouroboros in, uh, Loki. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so he was also data in the Goonies and short round in Indiana Jones. Yeah. And, um, the, I did not notice that the belt he's wearing is the same belt he wore for data in Goonies. Oh really? And they show his baseball cap from being short round is hanging on his bench. That's cool. And, yeah. I was like, Oh man, I totally missed that. Anyway, sorry. So there was a good Easter egg videos. Um, oh yeah, there's there's always great Easter egg videos. Yeah, I love yeah. watching stuff where it's like, um, oh, breaking down this movie or whatever. I don't like doing it for trailers because then a lot of the time, you know, their theories may be correct or incorrect, and I want to make my own theories off of it, and I don't want to see all the hidden details that'll yeah give yeah. away stuff. You know what? There is one other thing I wanted to say about algorithm stuff is sometimes I really hate when the kind of preview of a video doesn't like doesn't the, match it. The, it doesn't match the video or like the video doesn't follow through. And then what you've done is you've taught the algorithm that you like that kind of video and then you just get more of it. Like, like yeah. it'll either be like an incomplete video or Here's the like, thing. It's weird, especially on Facebook. It is. It's actually really rare for clickbait channels and uh, stuff like that to be very popular. There mm. are a few really popular ones just because I I don't know people are like ignorant of that stuff sometimes but well i can tell you i have clicked on the same one like multiple times thinking it was like like a real trailer for a movie and then i'm like oh this is a fan produced trailer yeah mm -hmm. and i finally saw the thing where it was like don't show videos from this channel in my feed and i was like okay click you know so now i won't accidentally click on that anymore you know so yeah and you know there's so many so many things like that that stuff doesn't tell you where you know you can actually like really control the algorithm you can tell like you can use and or not gates mm -hmm. to look up stuff on google oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. um and for those who don't know and or not gates are stuff that a lot of programs are based on where if you say this thing but not this right. it will literally give you those things but not the other thing obviously it's not one-to-one -one because AI isn't always good at reading yeah. what you're saying. And so sometimes if you're not very, very specific, it'll still give you the thing you said not to, but it'll still give yeah. you less of it. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, yeah, I think what I would take away from this conversation or what I would suggest is for entertainment purposes of like your enjoyment, curate an algorithm that will give you more of what you want yeah for purposes of remaining a functioning member of this society and keeping your critical thinking skills sharp try not to completely make your algorithm all just one like political side of the spectrum or something because 
what will happen is you'll get the more and more extreme political versions of that. Yeah. And then you, of whatever. It yeah. Is. Of whichever side. And then what you'll get is um, the bombastic versions of things and the um, incorrect things and the clickbaity things. And um, we'll lose all nuance in political conversation, which has pretty much already happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh. And, you know, you can easily become a conspiracy and theorist. That goes for negative and positive things, too. If you start watching a lot of negative things, you're only going to get negative stuff, like channels that all, yeah. that are very negative. Yeah. And if you watch stuff, it's very... So, like, if you're someone who's, like, a movie critic or a video game critic, critic or anything like that, I would really implore to watch stuff that um, is more positive mm-hmm. and... Because usually the more positive stuff still gives negatives. Like, oh, I really didn't like this... But here's all the good stuff yeah. still. Yeah, yeah, because there are critics where it feels like they're just always looking for whatever's wrong in the movie. Like, yeah. And so I'll be like, oh, I, I like that I'm movie. Like, and like, then they're like, this was crap. I absolutely <laughs> love Cinema Wins. Cinema Wins, okay. Yeah, on YouTube. Because there's Cinema Wins and there's Cinema Sins. Where it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, all of the, like, everything great about this movie or everything wrong about this movie and i only watch cinema wins because first of all the guy is like one of the most wholesome people that i've oh, yeah. ever heard on the internet like ever takes note <laughs> <laughs> i'm writing it down um I like, like he he's one of those people where it's like you listen to him and you're like i kind of just want to like be your friend yeah like i love people like that and but he's he's still like he does stuff where it's like, I know that this isn't like the most fan favorite thing, but I just really like how this is done here, here, and here. And it's like, you know, it really allows you to have a more po- positive outlook on stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, almost trying to fix the algorithm online is going to also help with your internal algorithm as a person. <gasps> Honey, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was actually a wonderful thought. Um... So, uh, oh, now I want to think about internal algorithms. That's really interesting. Uh, yeah, I, like because I, I think a lot of people try to think about how to improve themselves without mm-hmm. trying to improve external things first. Because usually you have to improve external things to improve internal things about someone. Um, I think you can go either way. Start yeah. from either direction. Maybe. I mean, it's hard to change. I, I feel like it's harder to change your thinking without changing, like the people you hang out with or the stuff that you watch or Mm because then they just bring you back around to it Mm, that's a whole other topic all right we're we're done for today we're done (laughs) yeah so uh yeah well time to go